Hi, Manchester, and welcome back to the Carla Garrick Show. This is episode 33, and as always, I'm delighted to be beaming into your home. I just got back from the Unity Breakfast over at the Grapponi Center in Concord, so I thought I would give you a quick update. That means, of course, that the primaries have come and gone, and uh, the Unity Breakfast is an opportunity for people to come together and to in the politest terms possible, put their butt hurt behind them and unify behind the party in order to win this November. So I've been going to these for a while, mostly because uh, back in 2016, when I ran for the first time, I did not know about this event. And, uh, you know, I walk around with a sign at a lot of protests that actually just says they fear unity. And I believe that uh, from a human perspective, that the more we stand together for things like truth and love and that kind of stuff, the better society will be. So in 2016, when I was like, oh, there's a unity breakfast and I didn't know about it. So since then, I've really tried to go to these because I think it does create a positive energy. I will say that this year's primaries were pretty, pretty ugly. And that is um, something that I don't really understand. You know, a lot of other states do their primaries much earlier in the election cycle. So it'll typically take place around June, July. Um, it is only... I think New Hampshire that really pushes it this far into September. And that actually is a disadvantage because what that means is, you know, people are nasty and frothy and the mailers, and I'm sure everyone back home got a hundred of those mailers. If you're anything like me, I just kind of take them and toss them straight in the trash, I'm afraid to say. Sorry to all the people spending hundreds and thousands of dollars. But, um, but, Today's Unity Breakfast, you know, again, was there to sort of unite everyone. So what happened in the primary? So basically, there were, according to the union leader, uh, several upsets. Uh, and the headline says, the outsiders are in. So I think that is a fair assessment of what is going on. And I think that really does reflect sort of a sense in the heart of granite staters that maybe business as usual is not going to get us to where we need to go. What do I mean by that? We know that the country is on the wrong track. We know that the economy is not flourishing. Uh, we have all received our energy bills and I am actually terrified to see what is going to happen over the next few months because frankly I I can't afford and I'm going to assume you can't afford to have your energy costs double which is kind of where it has gone and uh, have it double again so briefly the outsiders are in so in the first congressional in case you missed this the winner was caroline levitt and she got 34.6 percent of the vote so 35 percent of the vote she was running against matt mowers and uh my fan uh uh, Tim Baxter was also in that race. So Tim didn't make it, which is unfortunate, but I spoke to him this morning and he says he's going to be sticking around. And so I'm sure we'll see him again soon. But Carolyn Levitt for first congressional. So she'll be going up against Chris Pappas. She's a little dynamo. Honestly, if Tim wasn't my friend, I would have voted for her. So I'm excited to see her in this race. I think she's going to be dynamic, interesting. Uh, she is, you know, she does come from the Trump side of things. Uh, but I think that's actually going to serve her well in this race. In the second congressional district, there that was the race with um, jo uh, Bob Burns and George Hansel. And so, um, Bob Burns or Robert Burns, he got 33.3% of the vote and George Hansel got 30% of the vote. And then the one that we were probably all following fairly closely as well 
In the U.S. Senate race, uh, General Don Bolduck did prevail. Uh, Chuck Morris came a close second. Uh, the spread there was about 3%. And my guy, Bruce Fenton, uh, who moved out here from New York City several years ago, great guy, super into crypto, really looking towards the future and sort of how we can use tools that are available to us as uh, individuals in order to try and uh, fix some of the problems in the market as opposed to uh, top down from the government. So in that U.S. Senate race, Don Bolduck, General Bolduck, is going to go through. He got 37, and Chuck Morris got 35.9, so 36. So honestly, that spread was about 1%. So what was interesting at this morning's Unity Breakfast is uh, General Bulldog got the biggest applause line, and I mean bigger than Governor Chris Sununu, and I found that pretty interesting. So he definitely has a lot of grassroots support. Uh, General Bulldog actually very kindly came out to one of the events that I host monthly called the Merrimack Valley Porcupine uh, Meetup. It's been running for almost 20 years, and and he came and he talked to people in my community and our community. And, um, you know, he, he, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of free staters are anti-war. Um, in fact, I like to shame, uh, the left reporters, the democratic reporters who like to come and cover things because my question is what happened to the anti-war left? I mean, we're sort of in these proxy wars. And so one of the questions that was presented to the general was, Hey, would you support this national, uh, the defend the guard legislation? What is Defend the Guard legislation? Um, I was up at the State House on Sunday on 9-11 uh, with several, probably almost 50 to 100 people uh, who had come out in support of this legislation. Basically what it says is you cannot congressionally, the Congress cannot deploy the National Guard without a declaration of war. That is actually constitutionally how it's supposed to work. Uh, since basically, I think the Korean War, uh, Congress has kind of kicked that can and hasn't declared war when they're supposed to. And of course, why? So the reasoning is, if they don't declare war, but send troops or send the National Guard or send the army or send the military, then um, they don't actually have to have that fight with their constituents. They don't actually have to say, yes, um, we are going to send your sons and daughters into harm's way. So it's a, it's a punting and it's a really negative thing. Constitutionally, under the Constitution and under the laws of this land, you are supposed to declare war if you're going to go to war. So what the Defend the Guard legislation does is it says, hey guys, you cannot deploy the National Guard without a congressional declaration of war. So we asked the general if he would support that. He said he would. Um, he also did say he was going to come to the rally, and I'm sure he got busy and whatever, so he wasn't there. But um, but I'm hoping, and I will be holding his feet to the fire for that, because it's important legislation, and every single veteran, and I, I know a surprising amount, mostly uh, youngish people who were actually deployed, boots on the ground in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, these people are pretty bitter about what happened there, rightly so. And so this is really just a way to honor the people who are making the sacrifices. You can't send people to war to die if you're not willing to actually declare that war. So, uh, so that's the Defend the Guard legislation, and uh, that'll, of course, be a federal issue. So at this morning's Unity Breakfast, uh, we had... Uh, a big lineup of folks. Uh, Pamela Tucker led us in the prayer. And then um, the remarks were made by Carolyn Levitt. So she, again, is the, the uh, young lady running in the first congressional. It's interesting, the newspaper is kind of taking this position of, 
you know, she's an outsider, she's too, too Trumpian, she's not going to play to the Granite State voters, but I disagree. You know, she's young, she's uh, dynamic, she's a great speaker, she has a really positive, happy, good energy, and so I genuinely wish her well. Bob uh, Burns also spoke, General Bolduck spoke, the governor spoke, and then actually the keynote remarks were made by the RNC chair who came from, um, I think she said Michigan, uh, Ronna McDaniel, and uh, and she told a really cute, funny story where she said, you know, she went to her first unity breakfast, I think when she was 20 years old, uh, because her mom had run for office and her grandfather had endorsed against her mother. <laughs> and so her point was, hey, you know, if we can have this sort of family fight, uh, and get over it than anyone in in uh, in these different races where things didn't maybe work out the way you wanted. Uh, you know, we can still unite and we can still move forward. Um, Carolyn Levitt actually had a great point that she made, and I wanted I wrote it down because I thought it was a great line. Uh, she said that the Democrats may have the media on their side, but we have the truth. And I think that resonated with me because I've been thinking a lot about what the role of truth is and sort of where we are in, in the greater landscape of society and, you know, how the truth isn't really coming out, how the media runs interference, how possibly people don't even necessarily know what to believe anymore because there is so much propaganda out there. So in the art of propaganda, and I've done my fair amount of reading on this over the years, um, there's this notion, and it's called the big lie. And what the big lie does is it sets a baseline where you lie about something, but you harp on it and harp on it until it basically becomes... Uh, a note in people's brains so that later when the truth comes out, most people won't believe it because they heard the untruth too many times. A good example of that, to go back to sort of the deployment in National Guard and war and all of that, is the big lie of weapons of mass destruction. Now, you know, to this day, uh, None of the newspapers that lied about it, mostly the New York Times, um, has actually come out and done a mea culpa, has apologized, has said, oh, oops, we had it really wrong and maybe we shouldn't have sent all these people to there. And of course, also, you know, yes, our servicemen, but also the damage and the harm that is done to these nations that we go in and 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 bomb and kill and declare sanctions. And these are real people and they're suffering and we should be able to do better. So this notion of truth and the big lie, um, I wanted to mention, everyone knows who follows the show, that I am running for office again. I'm not running for Senate because my district got super gerrymandered um, out. But I'm running in Ward 11 here on the west side of Manchester. And um, in this idea of truth, I want to talk a little bit about some of the right to know work I've done over the years. So in New Hampshire, we have Article Eight of the New Hampshire Constitution actually talks about how our government is supposed to be open, uh, transparent, accountable, and uh, accessible to the people. And I take that notion very seriously because I feel like if we don't know what's going on in government, then we have a really hard time keeping them accountable. To be frank, even when the truth comes out, so even when after the big lie, the real truth comes out, like, for example, there were no weapons of mass destruction, that entire narrative was made up, everyone who went to testify in front of Congress on the federal level lied to Congress, and not one person was held accountable. In fact, when these guys go up there and they lie, they either get promoted or if they do leave, because we have this revolving door of corruption, they go to lobbyists or they get like a sweet deal uh, telling you the news as a pundit on the TV where they 
you know, try and influence your noggin. So right to know is a tool under RSA 91A that we can use as citizens of the Great Granite State to try and keep our government accountable. So one of the reasons I'm running for office and the reason I will ask for your vote is I want to go there to sort of get the skinny and the scoop for you guys. Um, when I ran for Senate, I actually ran on the platform that I would be your GoPro senator, meaning I would wear a camera uh, and just record my daily goings on at the state house. I'm going to continue to do that. Maybe I'll get a lapel one so I don't have to wear a you know, mining camera on my head like, like a lunatic. Um, but I would like to make sure that I am keeping you guys in the loop about what is going on there. Um, I am going to record my votes and I will make my votes public to you so you will be able to hold me accountable for my votes. And um, we can't rectify problems, we can't reform things if we don't have a good sense of what is going on. So in this quest to find the truth, we have to uh, be willing to do both some digging and to actually take the risks to go there and to be like, um, yes, you know, you should know what the backroom deals are. There's that famous saying about um, uh, how laws are made and they're like, oh, you go up to, to the government buildings and it's like, oh, you get to see how the sausage is made. And as someone who has made sausage, it ain't pretty and it really isn't pretty. But if you put someone like me in there, I will be able to come and report and tell you what is going on. At the Unity Breakfast also, I would say that the prevailing messaging was um, to make sure that we're focusing on the things that matter to you. So every Granite Stater understands that there is something going on economically that is not great. We have a massive inflation issue. And I predict actually that interest rates are gonna to have to continue to rise, they've already gone up. And the cascade effect to the economy of every incremental increase in the, um, in the rate of uh, is, go is going to negatively affect us because at some stage it actually starts to go onto your mortgage loan if you don't have a fixed mortgage. It goes onto your credit card. Um, those rates are gonna increase and that is really going to harm every single one of us. So inflation is caused by an increase in the money supply. What does that mean? It means the Federal Reserve, which is not really a government entity, but that's a discussion for another day. The Federal Reserve prints money, right? So they put X amount of money into circulation. Those numbers are M1, M2, M3. They don't report them all. It's it's a morass. It's a mess. They're, they've hidden the truth, one might say. Um, but basically, we have printed in America, the Federal Reserve colluding with the federal government has printed so much money, it is unsustainable. There is really no way that we're going to be able to dig our way out of these trillions and trillions of dollars that are just sort of a wash in the economy. So because of inflation, that influences things like our gas prices and our electricity prices. So as I said, there is... Um, there is this real connection that we can make both as voters and as people running for office is we're in a dilemma. And what you need is you need people who actually understand what the problems are to go to conquer, to help solve the problems. Now, you know, a lot of the issue I'm talking about now is, you know, it's on a federal level because they, they control this, the purses, so to speak. But there are many things that we can do on a state level to make sure that everyone in the state uh, live can live free 
or die, but more importantly, that we can live free and thrive. So I have a few minutes left, so I wanted to just give you an update on how free staters did in the election. So Belknap County, where Gunstock is, kind of got their butts handed to them. Uh, we knew that they were going to focus a lot of attention on there. In fact, there was a pack that came from the right that attacked incumbents. Um, I kind of feel, again, to go full circle from the start of the episode, that, you know, this sort of negative stuff and attacking your own team doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but be that as it may. So um, so Gunstock, I guess, will just stay a state-owned uh, ski resort. I still think there's a deeper story there, and it'll come out. The truth will come out, but it'll probably get shoved uh, under, you know, under, under the mat. Um, generally... Free Staters did really, really well. There was a larger number of people endorsed by the NHLA, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, uh, which is a nonpartisan group that looks at bills and assesses uh, candidates from a liberty perspective. And so um, uh, folks did really well about everyone got through. So I think this election is going to be um, probably the best that that pro-liberty candidates have done in uh, in the history of the state. I certainly hope so. And I certainly hope everyone watching this chooses to put me in the state house where I do think I can go make a difference and we can uh, you know start to to introduce a little more truth, openness, transparency into the process so that we can really start to make uh, positive changes. What are some positive changes that I would like to see? I would like to see our taxes go down because as we spend more money on all the messes they've made, the inflation, the economy, gas prices, all of that stuff, keeping a little more money in our pockets is going to be good for all of us. Um, I want to make sure that we're expanding school choice so that the money follows the child. And we are going to have to go look at some of the, 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 the way the money is being structured right now. There is an issue, but in the end, you know, property taxes are set by your town. And I know for us here in Manchester, you know, our property taxes are going to be going up again. And again, who can afford that? Like literally no one can afford any Democrats in there because they are literally decimating our economy and decimating us. Like it's not a random thing. It's not like, oh, this is happening somewhere else. We can all see the poverty that is being manifested and these are being, it's happening because of bad policy. So what we need is we need the right people to get into office so that we can reverse this trend and keep America as awesome as it is. You know, and 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 I want people to remember, you know, I'm an immigrant and this is an incredible country. I have lived in many places. I have traveled a lot. And you guys have no idea how lucky Americans are to live in this country with these values. And that value is individualism. That value is the hustle. It is innately American to be like, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try and do my best and I'm going to make something of my life. And if someone needs help, that should be a private transaction between the person who's trying to help and the person who's asking for help. Outsourcing it to make it other people's problems just creates an economic incentive for the middleman to start to pull more money. So I hope that, you know, folks will support me. I hope they'll actually come out and support the entire NHGOP slate. I think that, you know, good people got in. I think people are ready to shake some stuff up. If you live in Ward 11 and you would like a yard sign, please uh, feel free to email me at Carla at CarlaGarrick.com. That is C-A-R-L-A. -L -A 
G-E-R-I-C-K-E dot com. That is also my website where I have over 10 years of content that you can go look at for yourself. You will hear negative things about free staters, and I want you to understand that one, free staters are individuals, but two, I would like you to judge me on my merits. I have nothing to hide. I stand for the truth. You can go to my website. You can see what I'm about. You can see that every single piece of activism that I have ever done in this state has benefited every single Granite Stater because that's how we do it. Instead of creating special interests that we pit against each other to the detriment of all of us, we should only be doing things when they benefit everyone. So I, you know, that, that is what I believe. I believe that special interests are garbage and that if something isn't helping all granite stakers equally, we probably shouldn't be doing it. You can find uh, me again at Carla at CarlaGarrick.com. If you want to give me a phone call, please, you know, keep the hate calls to yourself. You can reach me anytime at 865-7140. Uh, Email me, follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, Uh, reach out, let me know about the yard signs, and uh, I can't wait to come knock on your door. My door knocking shoes got here today. They're super comfy, nice spongy because, uh, uh, you know, got to knock a lot of doors. So I look forward to coming and meeting you finding out what issues are important to you so that together we can build a better state and so that together we can live free and thrive.